Hello, I'm Christina Lammers. I'm an associate professor with the College of Nursing at South Dakota State University, and I'm going to present the results of our study on preconception health care among reproductive age women in our rural state. Preconception health care is defined as a set of evidence-based preventive and health promotion interventions that aim to reducing the health risk of women and improve the health of women and their partners before conception. Many women, especially if they are not planning to get pregnant, may not know they are pregnant for several weeks after conception. And health risks, such as exposures to drugs, chemicals, alcohol, or tobacco, previous diseases, and lack of folic acid intake can have adverse effects during the first three to eight weeks of pregnancy. Evidence shows that each of the preconception health care interventions improves the health outcome for mothers and children. The CDC and organizations worldwide have lauded the importance of including preconception health care in the routine care for all reproductive age women. Preconception health care should start by asking and counseling reproductive age women, all of them, about having a reproductive life plan followed by assessing and counseling about the risk of substance use and exposures to other chemicals, mental health issues and abuse, recommending folic acid intake, hepatitis B, rubella and varicella vaccinations, maintaining a healthy weight and keeping blood pressure and diabetes under control. But after almost two decades of recommendations, there are no health policies to support providing preconception health care in the routine care of reproductive age women in the United States. And almost one half of women of reproductive age don't know about preconception health care, and most do not receive the recommended interventions. Additionally, unplanned pregnancies, adverse birth outcomes, and infant mortality continue to be a challenge in the United States. Preconception health care is an underutilized strategy that can help reduce unplanned pregnancies and improve birth outcomes and infant mortality. Our objectives were to increase preconception healthcare knowledge and self-efficacy among rural reproductive age women. We provided two interactive sessions that focus on the health belief model constructs to increase women's knowledge and self-efficacy so they could take action to access preconception healthcare services. 85 women participated. We demonstrated a significant increase in preconception healthcare knowledge within the study group and between the study group and the comparison group. The Health Belief Model Summary score that look at the perceptions of risk, severity, benefits, barriers, and self-efficacy to seek preconception of care also showed significant improvement. In summary, providing preconception healthcare information to women that focus on the health belief model increases their knowledge and self efficacy, empowering them to seek preconception healthcare. Our next steps will be to investigate other strategies to promote women initiated access to preconception care. We also need health policies that support including preconception healthcare in the routine care of all reproductive age women. Thank you all for listening and I see you soon.